Sir. I need work. Do you need a man here? Well, now sit down. Maybe we can make a deal. I've been kind of looking around for somebody. Yeah, where'd you work last? North Dakota. North Dakota, huh? Ah, that's a uh, right smart distance off, seems to me. I need work. Can do everything on a farm. Cheap. <laughs> well, my name's uh, Thompson, Mr. Royal Earl Thompson. My name is Helton. Mr. Olaf Helton. <laughs> well, Mr. Helton, how much you figuring to gouge out of me? <laughs> I mean, uh, how much is it going to cost me for the privilege of giving you a place to sleep and all the food you can eat? <laughs> I'm a good worker. I get a dollar a day. Why, for a dollar a day, I'd hire myself out. Man, what kind of work is it you do when they pay you a dollar a day? Wheat fields. North Dakota. Uh, well, this ain't no wheat field by a long shot. This is more of a dairy farm. My wife, she wanted a dairy. She likes working around the cows and the calves, so I humored her, but that was a mistake. <laughs> she broke down on me. Now I gotta do nearly everything myself. Speaking as uh, one man to another, uh, ain't no money in it, so I can't give you no dollar a day, because I don't make that much out of it. I'll give you $7 a month. And you can eat at the table with us. That's all right. I take it? <laughs> well, now, looks like we got a deal, huh? You just take a few swings on that churn there while I run into town on a couple of errands. You know what to do with the butter if you get it, don't you? I know butter. No butter business. Hey, you're, uh, I'm sweet. I'm <laughs> sweet? Well, I'll be damned. You're gonna get money lonesome around here. Never seen a swing in this neck of the woods. It's all right. <laughs> What's all the noise? Who is it? There's a fellow out there says he's a Swede, Ellie. Says he knows how to make butter. Oh, I hope it turns out to be the truth. Looks like my head will never be any better. Oh, don't you worry now. You fret too much. Now, I'm going to ride into town and get a little order of groceries. Don't you linger now, Mr. Thompson. None of my family, my father, my brothers, nor my grandfather, none of them ever took a dram in their lives. I know, Ellie. I know. Now, you get some rest now. He's out there in the churn. Better keep an eye on him.
glad to do so. I'm Miss Thompson, and I want to tell you that I think you did real well in the spring house. That's all right. That's a pretty tune you're playing. Most folks don't seem to get much music out of a harmonica. I see you're mighty fond of music. We used to have an old accordion, and Mr. Thompson could play it right smart. But the little boys broke it up. Oh, you know how little boys are. You better set those harmonicas on a high shelf or they'd be after them. Boys are great hands for getting into things. I try to teach them, but it don't seem to do much good. Mouth fella I ever met up with in all my days. Looks like he's scared to crack his jaw if he opens his front teeth. You smell like a topa, Mr. Thompson. Uh, I'm sorry, Ellie. I just had one little toddy. It'd been impolite not to. Drunkenness can lead to lies and violence. I wouldn't want to live with either. Uh, it'll never happen again. I'm sorry, Ellie. Perhaps you could get one of the boys to bring me in an extra load of firewood. I'm thinking about bacon tomorrow. Oh, I'll get it, Ellie. I'll get it. Clean breathers. You drink whiskey, then you chew on it. Give me that. Now, both you boys go out there and get some wood. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. I'll get the wood. You get washed up for supper. You get washed up for supper. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, call Mr. Helton for supper. Say, Helton, supper's ready, you big swing. That's a good way to act. Now, you go out there and ask him decent. Well, come on in, Helton. Sit right there. Lord, for all these and thy other blessings, we thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Helton, what do you think of the weather? Is it going to rain or is it going to snow? Or are we just going to dry up and blow away, huh? <laughs> hmm. Now, you know, the funniest thing you ever saw happen today, old Judge Sims has a bear drinking goat, and they poured so much into him that he butted the mayor, and then uh, wheeled around and watered the square to a point where they had to call out the shovel brigade to stop the flood from washing up Franklin's mercantile. <laughs> Last time you sat in the courthouse, that was hit by the flood. That was a different day. And maybe a different goat. <laughs> Mr. Helton, you're not eating enough to keep you up to your full powers. If you expect to go on working the way you started today. Good night, Mr. Helton. No. Good night. <laughs> the way he talks. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, all of you, making fun of a poor stranger like that. How'd you like to be a stranger in a strange land? I like it. I think it'd be fun. Not enough. You're going to get sent to school next year, Herbert. That'll knock some sense on you. I'm going to get sent to the phone tour. That'll knock some sense on me. Oh, yeah, all right. Who says so? Sunday school teacher. Now, get the bed both of you. Come on, get down. Boy, take the hat off of you. I don't when they're so young and tender. I can't stand it. Goodness, Ellie, I wasn't pecking on them. As a teacher, I learned that yelling and pounding and violence do not help a child develop good manners and propriety. Yes, ma'am. I hope Mr. Helton will be a good example to him. 
Even if he can't be made to talk. To tell the truth, I think it's a mighty good change to have a man around the place who knows how to work and keep his mouth shut. Means you can do all the talking, huh? Means he'll keep out of our business. Not that we got anything to hide. Only thing is, though, he don't keep hearty enough to suit me. Like my grandma always used to say, no use putting dependence on a man who can't sit down Tell and you the truth, Nellie, I always thought your grandma was a terrible old fool. She'd just say the first thing that popped into her head and call it God's wisdom. My grandma wasn't anybody's old fool. She knew what she was talking about when she said the first thing you think is the best thing you can say. Mm, really? Well, you just try speaking out in mixed company the first thing you think. Suppose you happen to be in church thinking about a hen and a rooster. Oh, I bet you'd shock Brother Martin right off his pulpit. <laughs> no more meat on you than a rabbit. I like him corn fed. Mr. Thompson. Sometimes I think you're the evilest minded man that ever lived. <laughs> That's to show you how it feels, pinching so hard when you're supposed to be playing. I guess one of my problems has been that I have a deep conviction that running a dairy and chasing after chickens is woman's work. I'm probably wrong, but that's uh, my feeling, and I'm stuck with it. I can plow fur, cut sorghum, chuck corn, handle a team, build a corn crib as well as any man. But slopping hogs, slopping hogs is not for Royal Earl Thompson. Cows coming up twice a day to be milked, standing there sad-eyed. And them calves pull at that rope till their eyes pop out, and still they break their damn necks trying to get at the tent. Now, I don't change the diapers on my kids, so why should I try to wean a calf? that I can do. Why, do you know that I take that fresh butter and the eggs and the fruits in their proper season and I do a right smart job of selling? Well, uh, that's man's work. Now, this next year, you just keep on working the way you've been and I'll just keep on running the place the way I've been. That's all right. A good work, you. That you are. And I'm going to raise you to $10 a month. That's all right. Nothing. Nothing now, you mean? Well, I got plenty for you to do. 
And so will your father when he hears about this. You boys play. Make game with this. This not for play a game thing. It's for music. My music, me or my music. This not good now. It's for music, for my music. Ulla Welton's music. Said they'd been fooling with his harmonicas. Blowing at them, getting them all full of spit and dirt, and they don't play good. Now we gotta do something so they always remember they shouldn't ever go into Mr. Hilton's things. I'll do something! I'll tear their heights for them, I'll take a camp rope to them, they don't look out! Mr. Thompson, you better leave the weapon to me. You don't have a light enough hand for it, too. That's just the trouble with them now, rotten, spoiled. Bother Mr. Hilton, a man who done nothing but help. Help all of us! I'd knock him down with a stick of stone. Anything to come to hand. Mr. Thompson, you know I don't hold with this way of raising children. Uh, well, now, what do you got to say for yourself? Well, I'll break your wrist for you. I got a good mind to do it. Mr. Thompson? Oh, boy, your age acting like he's five. That's what you're doing. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. Now, the next time... I catch either of you hanging around Mr. Helton's shack. I'm gonna take the hide off both of you. You hear me? Yes, sir. Mr. Helton hasn't come in for his supper. Arthur, go out and tell Mr. Helton he's late for his supper. And you tell him nice now. Supper's ready, Mr. Helton. Mother would like you to come eat now, if you wish. And so would Father. And so would Herbert. And so would I. is my name. Mr. Homer T. Hatch. Come to see you about buying a horse. Well, I reckon you've been misdirected. I ain't got a horse for sale. Usually, if I have something like that to sell, I tell the neighbors and tack up a little sign on the gate. <laughs> I always say something like that when I come calling on a stranger. 
Because I've noticed that when a fellow says come to buy something, nobody takes him for a suspicious character. Yeah, well, that's all lost on me, because I never take a man for a suspicious character until he shows himself to be one. Until that happens, one man's as good as another, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I ain't come to you to buy no other cell. Fact is, I want to have a little talk with you. It won't cost you a cent. Yes, sir. Homer T. Hatch is my name, and America is my nation. Reckon you must know the name. No, I don't think I know the name. Don't know the old Hatch family? Why, we come home from Georgia, oh, 50 years ago. Been here long yourself? Well, just my whole life, and my pa and my grandpa before me. My grandpa emigrated in 1836. From Ireland, I reckon. From Pennsylvania. Now, what makes you think we come from Ireland? What I always say, a fellow's got to come from somewhere, don't he? Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, what I always say is that this is a slack season and we're all laying around a little. Nonetheless, we all got our chores to do. Now, I don't want to hurry you, but if you come to see me on business, you better get down to it. Looking for a man named Helton. Mr. Olaf Eric Helton from North Dakota. I was told I might find him here. Well, yeah, Mr. Helton's right here, and he's been here, going on better than three years now. He's a mighty steady man. You can tell anybody I said so. <laughs> well, uh, if you want to see Mr. Helton, I'll round him up for you. I'm in no special hurry. <laughs> I know that tune like an old palm of my hand. It's kind of a... Uh... Scandahoovian song. Something about getting up in the morning, feeling so good you can't hardly stand it, so you drink up all the liquor for noon. All the liquor you were saving for the noon layoff. It's words ain't much I understand. It's a pretty tune. It's kind of a drinking song. Well, he's been playing that same tune off and on for better than three years, going right here on the place. Oh, he was singing it ten years for that in Bismarck, North Dakota. Yes, sir. He used to sit up in that straight jacket, singing away. Well, I couldn't hold no harmonic on the jacket. What's that you say? What's that? Oh, oh, I didn't mean to tell you. It just slipped out. Well, you mean to tell me they had him in a straight jacket in a lunatic asylum? They sure did. That's right where they had him from time to time, in a white jacket. And he was perfectly content singing away, as long as nobody talked to him. And one night he just left, you might say. Disappeared. Went. And here he is. I'll settle down playing that same song. Well, he never acted crazy to me. He always acted like a sensible man. <laughs> no, no, he never got married, for one thing, and works like a horse. Oh. Oh, it saves his money, and he don't drink or swear. <laughs> well, if he's crazy, I think I'll go crazy myself. For oh, oh, that's good. I never thought of it that way. Let's all go crazy. Get rid of our wives and save our money, huh? <laughs> well, that is exactly what I had in mind. Uh, look, uh, let's go around the back of the house. There's a uh, more breeze there. Uh, you see, uh, uh, my wife is uh, sort of an invalid, uh, going on uh, 14 years now. And you know, it's, it's mighty tough on a poor man having a sickness in the family. Yeah, she's a mighty delicate woman. You got trouble with her eyes, too. Oh, I never had much for a woman's always complained. I get rid of her mighty quick. Just as you say, a dead loss keeping one up. Yeah. Well, uh, that ain't what I had in mind, either. My wife's a mighty reasonable woman, but I wouldn't want to answer to what she'd say or do if she found out we had a lunatic on a place all this time. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing how different two men's ideas can be about what good chewing tobacco is. For instance, mine is lighter colored. Because there isn't any sweetener in this plug. Well, a little sweetener don't do no harm as far as I'm concerned, but it's got to be mighty little. Man, you're here named Morgan, John uh, Williams Morgan. Chews a plug, it's as black as your hat, as soft as melted tar, and fairly drips with molasses. Now, I don't call that a good chew. Such a chew would simply gag me. I couldn't even begin to put it in my mouth. Well, I just barely tasted it, as you might say. I took a little piece of my mouth and spit it out. I'm dead sure I wouldn't even get that far. I like a dry, natural chew without any artificial flavoring of any kind. Artificial flavoring is just put in to cover up a cheap leaf, make a man think he's getting more than he's getting. Even a little sweetening, that's a sign of a cheap leaf. 
I always paid a good price for my plug. I'm not a rich man. I don't go around setting myself up to be one. But I'll say this. When it comes to tobacco, I always buy the best on the market. Sweetening even a little. Now, about this, Mr. A... Helton. I don't see no reason holding it against a man because he went loony once or twice in his lifetime. And I don't intend to take no steps about it. Not a step. Well, of course, some people just soon have a lunatic around the house as not. Back home in North Dakota, we don't feel that way. No, sir. Like to seen anybody there trying to hire a lunatic, especially after what he done. After what he done? Oh, nothing to speak of. Just went loony one day in the hay field and shoved his pitchfork through his brother while they was making hay. That's all he done. Well, I don't deny that's news. Yes, sir. That's news. But I still say something must have drove him to it. Hmm. Brother was going to get married. Borrowed Helton's harmonica to serenade his bride one evening, and he lost it. Brand new harmonica. Brother wouldn't buy him a new one, so Mr. Helton just ups, as I says, and runs his pitchfork through his brother. Well, he sure thinks a heap of his harmonicas. You always like that part about getting so gay, you'd go ahead and drink up all the liquor before noon. You know, in them sweet countries, a man carries a bottle of wine around with him as a matter of course. Well, the fact is that this Helton is a dangerous escaped lunatic. And the fact also is that in the last 12 years or so, I must have rounded up, oh, 20 odd escaped lunatics. That's quite a tidy sum in the long run, the reward, but that isn't a question. Point is, I'm for law and order. I do not like lawbreakers or escaped lunatics, do you agree? Well, circumstances alter cases, as a feller says. And now that I know of Mr. Helton, he ain't dangerous now, as I told you. He ain't? Well, I say he is. And the law is solidly behind me. And what are you aiming to do now? That's the question. Well, I come prepared for a little scuffle. Still, I don't want no violence if I can help it. I figured the two of us could overpower him. You sure must be hard up for something to do. You sure got a sorry job on your hands. And now I'm going to give you a good piece of advice. You just get it out of your head, any idea of coming around here and hurting Mr. Helton. And the quicker you get that hard rig away from my front gate, the better I'll be satisfied. Just a, just a, just a moment. Maybe you'd like it better if I went to your neighbors for help, huh? Because you're set on harboring an escaped lunatic who killed his own brother? But I'm telling you all along, he ain't loony now. He's been with us going on there four years. He's, he's like one of the family. He's the best standby a man ever had. Well, God, you're crazy. You're crazier than he ever was. Now you get off this place or I'll take those handcuffs and turn you over to the law. You're trespassing. Go on, get out of here before I knock you down. You try it. You just go ahead and try it. Come on. Killed Mr. Helton. I had to knock him out, but he won't come to. Yonder goes Mr. Helton. Boys are fishing. Fishing at Halifax. Thank God the boys are not here. How'd your missus take it? Took it hard. You sure he got him, huh? Yeah, he got him. He stuck that knife in Helton's stomach and ripped right up. He couldn't have run far or like that. Well, we'll find him alive or dead. I got half the county looking for him right now. Uh, Sheriff, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd ride on to the others. Uh, 
You'll find him by the wood pile. I'll take my missus with me and follow along. Oh, why can't she just ride in the wagon with the corner? Well, it's all the same to you. I just assume she went with me. Come on, Ellie. We're going home. How's Mr. Hilton? They ain't found him yet. I hope they never do. Oh, well, don't make any difference, Ellie. He's hurt so bad, it don't make any difference. Poor man. Stranger in a strange land. Uh, Ellie, there's something I got to mention to you. If the sheriff asked you, I want you to say you saw it happen. I want you to say you saw him jump Helton with a knife and you saw him... I want you to say you saw me defend Mr. Helton's life. But you're asking me to tell a lie, Mr. Thompson. No, but it ain't a lie. That's just what did happen. Uh, I might have saved a life if I moved a little quicker. The damn man coming in here to cause trouble and murder. But he didn't do murder. What well, do you think I did? You answer me, Ellie. I'll say what you want me to, Mr. Thompson. But I will tell a lie, because I didn't see it happen. I saw the man lying on the ground and you with the axe and Mr. Hilton running. But I'll say what you want me to. I'll lie if that's what you want me to do. It ain't what I want you to do, Ellie. It's what you have to do. But it ain't a lie. What is it exactly you want me to say, Mr. Thompson? That's what I saw, Sheriff. Mr. Hatch moving with the knife, and then Mr. Helton stepped in front of Mr. Thompson. And as he did, Mr. Thompson took the axe and tried to stop him from hurting anybody. That's good enough for me, Miss Thompson, but there will have to be a trial. Why will there have to be a trial? There always has to be a trial in a case where there's a killing. Then he'll be tried for killing? He'll be tried for murder, Miss Thompson. That's the law. That's the way it's got to be. You tell me when you find Mr. Hilton. You hear? You tell me how he is. I want to know. He acted like a mad dog. We didn't mean to harm him, but but he was crazy as a loon. We picked up a club and tried to brain every man who come near him. Then he almost killed a man. We had to get tough, Miss Thompson. Nobody likes killing a loony, but we had to protect ourselves. Well, you asked me personal to tell you what happened, Miss Thompson. So I did. That's how it happened. I thank you, Mr. Baldy. But I, I can't understand how a man hurt that bad could do all them things. 
Well, he wasn't hurt that bad. He didn't have a mark on him except where his head was broke. What did you say? I said he had a mark on his head, but there was no sign of any knife cuts anywhere else on his body. But I saw the knife. I was there. I know you was there, Thompson. You got yourself a lawyer yet? No. I'd give that some thought if I was you. Just stay calm, cool, and collected. Your wife sitting in the courtroom will be a powerful influence with the jury. You just plead not guilty, and I'll do the rest. But you don't understand, Mr. Perry. I understand that you don't say nothing unless I tell you to. And you remember, Hatch probably came there just to settle an old score with Helton. A personal score, as far as you're concerned. You don't know nothing about Helton being crazy all along. Oh. Now, listen to me. Now, remember... You don't say one word unless I tell you to. You just answer yes or no. Understand, Thompson? Yes. Yeah, but you see, Mr. Burley, I never even thought of killing anybody, much less Mr. Hatch. They tell me there was no knife mark, not a scratch on him. Well, those things happen. It uh, probably just looked that way to you. Because of the way he was standing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You did fine, Ellie. Just what you had to do. Well, Thompson. Well, Thompson. care what the jury said. My brother was a lawman. He come down here to take an escaped loony back to the booby hatch. And that man killed him come on, because he man. didn't want to spoil a good thing. Everything he didn't want to lose a right. poor fool that was doing a hundred dollars worth of work every month for a month. Hold up there, Burley. Hey, look, uh, you did fine, but uh, I didn't get a chance to talk. You know, as the feller says, I never got a chance to explain what happened. And I remembered while the jury was out some things that had slipped my mind from before. You see, I don't think people understood what an ornery little louse that Mr. Hatch was. No, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, yeah, either. but don't you think I should come down to the office tomorrow Mr. And Thompson, explain... I got you off just as I predicted, didn't I? <laughs> yes, sir, you did. And Very well, then. Kind of... Just send me your check, Mr. Thompson. Yes, I'll send There's your check. There's no need check. for further talk about the matter. Hold up there, boys. I want you up early in the morning. I want old Jim hitched to the buggy by 6 o'clock. What on earth for? Because we're going to see every one of our neighbors and we're going to tell them the truth. I never did get a chance to talk at this trial. They just asked a lot of questions. And I just answered yes or no. I never did get to the core of the matter. But I'm going to start tomorrow. I want you there with me, Ellie. I want you to tell him what you saw. Just as you say, Mr. Thompson.
No, I never killed that Mr. Hatch on purpose. Only thing you could do, Tom. I'm pleased to hear that. It must be terrible. We knew oh, it. Ellie. What a shame. That's right. I saw it. I was it's trying to save shame. Mr. Helton's life. Good day, Miss Thompson. Of course. Mr. Thompson. The only thing you could do, Tom. Just stopping by. Good day. Pleased to hear that. But they wouldn't let me we talk knew it. at the trial. Of course. The only thing you could do, Thompson. It must be terrible for you, Ellie. What a shame. I'm sorry. It's just as he says. Well, if That's you don't right. believe me, you can believe my wife. Thompson? She won't lie. That's right. I saw it. It's just as he says. That's right. Good day, Miss Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Thank you for stopping by. Good day. No, I'm telling the truth. You heard my wife. Oh. Is your mom and papa there? Well, tell them Mr. and Mrs. Thompson come to see him. Mama, papa, come out here. The man that killed Hatch is coming to see you. Light down, Miss Thompson. Have a seat. These folks come to pay us a visit. Well, as I uh, reckon you happen to know, I've had some strange troubles lately, and as the fellow says, they ain't the kind of troubles that comes to a man every day of the year. And there's some things I don't want no misunderstanding about in my neighbor's minds. I killed that man, Hatch, in self-defense. I was trying to save Mr. Helton's life. Ask my wife. My wife will tell you. She won't lie. It's true. I saw it. It's just as Mr. Thompson says. Well, it surely is too bad, but I can't see what we got to do with all this here. See no good reason for us to get mixed up in no murder matters. Whichever way you look at it, ain't none of my business. Everybody going around shooting their heads off. But you better know, we don't hold with killing. The Bible shut says your that... Mouth or I'll shut your mouth. I'll shut it for you now. Look. We've lingered long enough as it is. It's getting late, and we have far to go. <laughs> this finishes it, Mr. Thompson. I'm just not going to do this anymore. So we got to make people believe in the truth, Ellie. Whose truth, Mr. Thompson? Why couldn't you argue with that man, Hatch, and get him off the place? Why did you have to ruin the boys' lives and have Mr. Helton killed like some poor mad dog? Well, I keep hoping, Ellie, I... Keep hoping. You might say, I remember now, Mr. Thompson. I really came around the corner in time to see everything. I keep hoping you quit saying it's a lie. For I, I truly trust to God it is not. There was a time when my husband hadn't killed a man and made me lie for him. And I could tell the truth to anybody about anything. But now, life has become all one dread. And there's no place for me to go. Oh, sweet Jesus. I just don't know how to go on living anymore. I'm sorry you feel that way about everything, Ellie. But it'll change, Ellie. We'll live with it. And we'll whip it. Maybe everything about my killing that hatch was wrong from start to finish. Damn it, I did. Maybe not the right thing, but the only thing I could do. But did I have to kill him? My God, I never saw a man I hated more. When I first laid eyes on him, I knew in my bones that fellow was just here for trouble. Why didn't I just tell that Hatch to get out before he ever got in? Why, hell, uh, why didn't I do a lot of things? Are you asleep, Ellie? All I had to do to get rid of him peacefully was to tell him. Well, maybe I had to hit him. But just grab him and put those handcuffs on him and turn him over to the sheriff for disturbing the peace. Oh, but what about that knife? Well, if I hadn't killed him, nothing would have happened to Mr. Help. Oh, God! <laughs> Helton would be playing his tune right now. 
about feeling so good in the morning, about drinking up all the wine so he'd even feel better, and that hatch would be safe, in jail maybe, ready to listen to reason, maybe, and repent his meanness. Dirty, yellow leopard out, coming around, ready to persecute an innocent man, ruining a whole family which never happened. Again, and I'll blow your heart out. Mom, uh, Mama, Mom, uh, Mama, don't die. I'm all right. Don't you worry about me. I'm all right. 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 Well, I reckon I had better ride over and get the doctor. Don't look like this faint is a good sign to me. You boys uh, keep watch till I get back. Now, don't get any notions in your head. I never did nothing to harm your mother in my life. take care of her. do solemnly swear that I did not take the life of Mr. Homer T. Hatch on purpose. I did not aim to hit him with the axe, but only to keep him off Mr. Helton, who would have done the same for me. I've told all this to the judge and the jury and they let me off, but nobody believes it. My wife, it was Mr. Homer T. Hatch who came to do wrong to a harmless man. He caused all this trouble and deserved to die but I'm sorry it was me that had to kill him. 